Good morning. Today we are continuing working with our formula page. We're actually going to be doing verifying identities. This is actually very similar to doing a proof. Uh, now it's not like what you had in geometry, but it's more just showing that the left side of the equation equals what we have on the right side of the equation. We can only work with one side of the equation at a time. So what we want to do is to show the left side is equal to the right side. We write things going down the page. We'll kind of work through a couple of examples here. We see on the right side we have the word cosine. Let's make sure the left side has both words in cosine. So to begin with, we are going to have our cosine squared. Now, the sine squared, go to your formula page. Let's look for a formula that we can trade it in for a cosine. We find 1 minus cosine squared. That comes from our Pythagorean identity. We do have to write down what we have on the right, but we're only going to work on the left side. We're trying to make the left side look exactly like the right side. Let's remove our parentheses. So that would give us cosine squared x minus 1. We have minus times minus changes that to a plus cosine squared x. And again, we copy down. Don't forget to write down so that you can see the steps as we go down through the problem. Gather our like terms. Cosine squared plus cosine squared would make this 2 cosine squared minus 1. And that's equal to what we had on the right. Now we can see that the left side and the right side are both equal. So we have completed this proof that's called verifying an identity. Let's do another example. In the second example, what we want to do is we see that we have cosines on the left side in parentheses. We want to get to sines. So to begin with, let's start by actually foiling this. They are two binomials. For the first term would be 1. The outside term would be cosine x. The inside term is minus cosine x. The last would be minus cosine squared x. And again, we just write down what we have from the right. You can see that this middle and the, out, the two middle terms cancel each other out. So we would be left with 1 minus cosine squared x. And again, that's equal to what we have on the right. Let's trade from our formula because we want to get to the right side where there's a sine. Let's trade in cosine. So we have 1. Cosine squared from our formula page is 1 minus sine squared. That comes from the Pythagorean identities. Now, remove your parentheses. We have 1 minus 1. Minus times minus changes that to a plus sine squared x. And over here to the right. 1 minus 1, that's 0. So we are then left sine squared equals sine squared. And we have it finished. We're just doing proofs. We're showing that the left side is actually equal to the right side. Let's do one more example. In this example, you can see that we have a lot of different trig words. So let's begin on the left side and try to make it equal to the cotangent on the right side. We see that in these two terms, tangent is present. So let's factor out a tangent. So we have a tangent. That would leave a cosecant squared minus 1. And again, we have what's on the right side. Now, there's cosecant squared. Go to your formula page. 
what is cosecant squared equal to in the Pythagorean identities? It's 1 plus cotangent squared. And then we still have minus 1 equals cotangent x. Inside the parentheses, you can see the 1 minus 1 will cancel each other out. So we actually just have tangent x times cotangent squared x equals cotangent x. Back to the formula page. Cotangent is reciprocal of tangent squared. So we could write this like this. We traded our cotangent squared in for 1 over tangent squared. We now can divide out. This would leave a 1 here, would leave a tangent down below. So this actually becomes 1 over tangent x, which is equal to our cotangent x. I forgot up here. Got to remember to bring everything down. Go back to your formula. What is 1 over tangent? It is cotangent x equals cotangent x. Now, there are several ways that you can work these problems. I am just showing you one example demonstrating how you could factor things out. You can FOIL different problems. You can be able to gather them together. Work on these today. Read my ex explanation in um, the classroom as to why we're doing all of this, and uh, I'll give some more information. Okay, let me know if I can help you.